Hey y'all, it's Lex. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are beginning our makeover to transform this first floor half bathroom or powder room. Hey, how you doing? And it's a two and a half by seven foot bathroom, nine foot ceilings, nothing but the pedestal sink and the toilet. Our inspiration for this bathroom is pretty simple. It's a black, white, and brass color palette with some stenciling on the wall and some paneling on the lower wall. I think we can get a moody but warm space. So day one, we began the process of removing the pedestal sink from the wall. There's no other way to change the faucet without removing it from the wall, and this proved to be a pretty traumatizing task. Hey guys, so it is day three of this bathroom makeover that we're doing on the first floor of our home. And I just thought that I'd come and give you like a little update on what stage I'm at and what troubles I ran into in this process. So day one was basically installation of the faucet. That's all we did day one. And that was the day we ran into the most trouble. It kind of trickled into day two, if I'm being honest, but the faucet itself wasn't the issue. It was just the pieces of the faucet that are meant to fit with the hoses didn't really fit as well as they should have. Some of them even broke in the process of us tightening the hoses. So we actually had to go out to Home Depot, take the hoses and the pieces from the new um, faucet and physically try to fit them with things that we found in the store. The pieces that we had to buy to replace them were not expensive, so it's not a big deal. Faucet looks amazing, it works great. That was just an issue we ran into. Another issue that we ran into in the process is that in order to reinstall the sink and get everything, the faucet and everything hooked back up, we need the faucet to be in place and the actual like basin of the sink to be in place, but we can't attach it to the wall. So it's gonna have to be like suspended or like freestanding until we get everything tightened and then we can slide it back against the wall and then we can tighten it. What we decided to do with the bottom four foot of our wall is to do some sort of like paneling and, and just some molding around the wall. We're probably gonna paint it black. I think it's gonna look really great. It'll give you almost like the timbre effect. If you don't know what that is, I'll like show you a picture up here. It'll give you that effect without that amount of effort and without it being a wood that you have to maintain. The beadboard is gonna be really inexpensive. It's like 35 bucks for a sheet and it's a four by eight sheet. We only need two and a half or three of them to do the entire downstairs bathroom. So it's pretty inexpensive. What we did day two was we just painted the corners and around the baseboards um, or around the ceiling and the door frame so that we could go ahead and start rolling today and hopefully get most of it painted. I assume it's gonna need two coats. The color we're using is Bohemian Lace by Bear. I love this color, it's in my living room. And then after that, we're gonna use, I think it's called Acorn Black to actually roll the black stencil. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be cute. Trust me, just stay tuned. This is my makeshift painting station. I had a drop cloth somewhere. I don't know where Shadi went. So we have a microfiber towel here to help us clean up any paint that spills, but I think I'm gonna drop an old um, sheet down on the floor to help. And like I said, the color we're using is Bohemian Lace by Bear. So into the bathroom we go. I wanted to show you the progress. Everything is, well, the base paint is up and it looks really, really good. It looks so much brighter and bigger in this really small space. Update. So I just took down the stencil. I don't know if you can tell, but up towards the top of the wall, the top of the stenciling, there's some bleeding 
it's not too too bad it's a little wabi-sabi comment down below if you know where that term wabi-sabi is from but we don't particularly mind that if you look down at the bottom it looks a lot cleaner but it doesn't look as dark so that might be a trade-off but the pattern looks really good we're kind of liking it i think we're gonna let it be a little imperfect and let it be perfect that way So take two on the stencil went a lot better. Looks pretty good. just one tonight the rest of our boards need to be cut to, to length um, for the wall and we have a piece of decorative molding that will go above it okay I'm not sure where we left off I think my husband got some footage of him putting up the rest of the the beadboard which looks really good in here and we did paint the seams where they meet so it wouldn't be so obvious. So you really can't tell where they're meeting and not meeting. We do need to go back in and caulk the holes from the nail gun. Let me back up. But aside from that, we'll be good. I have not gone back to the stencil yet. I feel like there's a certain amount of mental stamina I need to have to do this and I don't, I don't have it right now, but I'm gonna try to pick it up tomorrow and finish it. Um, there is There are a few places the paint needs to be touched up, so maybe I'll do that tonight. And I am outlining this wall that will be completely black. I am doing that now. Hopefully I'll be done with that. Um, and I can just roll the rest of the color on, this, on the wall tonight because it's probably gonna need a second coat tomorrow. Um, and I'll finish the stencil tomorrow and we can put this bathroom back together. Okay, so I want to show you the progress. So the stencil is coming along pretty well. I have this whole wall, this little piece done. It's the only piece that's completely done. And see the rest of the bathroom? So I have the entire bottom piece of the wall for the majority of the bathroom to do. Um, these corners here, the stencil didn't perfectly go all the way across, so I need to do those. Um, and then, then our trim, and yeah, some quick tips. When you have like outlets, um, light switches, what I did was I laid the stencil over it and I left, you know, a little bit of gap for it. I still taped it down and I rolled, but it wouldn't let me roll all the way. I'll have to touch that up, make it look pretty. Um, I did the same thing here, but it turned out a little bit better. This is flatter. So I would recommend that you still tape it down, but just roll, take your time rolling around those areas and you will kind of have to roll from multiple angles to get it done. Another thing about rolling from multiple angles, so I don't know if you can tell, but like certain in certain directions, I rolled upward looking at the stencil so the stencil sits closer to the top of the marker whereas there are places where i was looking at it eye to eye like right here where it's set, set almost directly in the middle um and then places at the top where i was looking down at the stencil so whichever way you're rolling from is going to affect how the stencil sits on the wall i don't think you can really tell that much that it's not always completely consistent but yeah I think other than that it looks pretty pretty good but you should know that if that's something that's going to bother you and you want the perfect stencil um, also the stencil really doesn't require much paint in fact it requires the least like 
If you think you have very little paint on your brush, you probably have too much. It's a little hard to get the trick of. Um, just start out with the least amount of paint and build it up. That's what I would tell you. And then you can avoid stuff like that right there. But I will go back in with like a smaller paintbrush and fix up a few of those pieces. I'm not going to fix up a lot of them. I actually prefer it to look like these do. Like some of it's really full. Some of it's got a little wavy edge. Some of it's not completely filled in. I actually love the way that these look imperfect. They look more like a print to me. So almost like a wallpaper. I don't mind that. Um, I don't mind most of the imperfections, but some of them like, he's just egregious. He's doing too much. So I'm gonna finish the stencil off in here. This wall is painted completely black now, so it's ready for the sink to go back in. The only thing I need to do is get up behind that light, which I will do tomorrow or whatever. Ceiling's painted. She's looking good. Um, and I bought new fixtures. Yeah, they're gonna look so good. Let me remind you what this bathroom looked like before. And here it is after. I really love the result. Um, I'm really impressed that we were able to achieve it under the budget that we used. And more than anything, that we reused many things that we already had to kind of 
repurpose things and upcycle things, which I always think is a great way to reduce your impact on the environment. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I have a makeover for the foyer area or garage entryway area coming up really soon. It's going to be super cute. I think I can top this. We'll see. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe and make sure you like this video and comment down below. What was your favorite part of this bathroom makeover? See you next time.